So if uh, theta, theta is an uh, unknown parameter, and the theta hat is an unbiased estimator, uh, then the Gramerov bound says that the variance of theta hat is going to be greater than or equal to 1 over expected value of d log f d theta squared. Or you can also write it as minus 1 over the second derivative of d log f. So let me do a couple of examples where I'll do a couple of cases where uh, it's an efficient estimator. Then I'll show you a case where it is not an efficient estimator. So let, uh, it's sort of classic uh, example. So let's assume that the data is Gaussian uh, with the mean and variance. And here, we'll do one by one. We'll assume that the mean is unknown. Uh, so the uh, joint density function is, of course, uh, uh, the data is independent. So it's the product of the density functions. I write this uh, mu here just to show that uh, the density function, of course, is a function of mu also. So the, as you know, this will turn out to 1 over 2 pi sigma squared uh, n by 2 e to the power minus sigma OK, so that's the way it will turn out to be. And uh, we can, uh, to compute the Gramero bound, remember, look at here. To compute the Gramero bound, you don't need a unbiased estimator. So let's just uh, compute the Gramero bound first. So we need to take the logarithm of this. Logarithm of f of x comma theta is uh, So from here, minus n by 2, logarithm of uh, 2 pi sigma squared, or minus sigma xi minus mu the whole squared over 2 sigma squared. So, huh? What is that? Oh, yeah, yeah, Th theta here, right? I mean, mu here, of course. The parameter is mu, right? Is that what you're saying? Yeah. yeah. So let's take the derivative. So d log f comma mu uh, with respect to mu. So remember, there is no mu here. So if you look at this, uh, derivative of this quantity is uh, 2 multiplied by this 2, 2 cancels. So you get sigma xi minus mu. Uh, this, so the two comes here, cancels with this over sigma squared. I, uh, then multiply it by the derivative of this quantity, which is minus one. So minus minus cancels, you get this expression. You could sit here if you want. So remember, we have two expressions. So we can either square this. I'll do it both the ways. So let me take the second derivative one more, a second derivative also. So I'll show you both the ways here. So this is going to be, uh, so second derivative, d mu squared. So derivative with respect to mu. So there are two expressions here. This is n times uh, mu, so this is n over sigma squared, right? So now, uh, of course, if you, uh, so if you take the expected value of this, that's the same quantity, so there's nothing. So we already have this expression. Expected value of this is, uh, this is a constant, so that itself. So here, you have to square this expression. So if you square d log f x comma theta, uh, not theta, d mu, you get square xi minus mu squared over sigma 4. 
Now you have to take the expectation here. So this is a little more work. So this is going to be, so if you use the second expression, we already have the answer, because look at here. Uh, so the answer here is the, this gives the sigma squared CR to be minus one over expected value of the second derivative of F with respect to mu squared. So that's going to be uh, sigma squared over N. Inverse of this, right? So that's the Cremer row bound, yes? Now, I, just for uh, your sake, I'll do this way also, we'll see. Now you have to take the expected value of this, but then here i equal to one through n, this is square. So this is uh, double summation, i here j, expected value of xi minus mu multiplied by xj minus mu. So we have, to, uh, uh, divided by sigma 4. Now this you have to consider two cases, i equal to j, i is not equal to j, right? So that's going to be expected, uh, i equal to j will be expected value of xi minus mu to the power 4, right? i equal to 1 through n because uh, squared, so this is going to be squared, right? over sigma 4, and here what do you get? Here you have the summation, double summation, expected value, xi minus mu multiplied by xj minus mu, i, I not equal to j. So what's the, what is the answer on the second one, anybody? Zero. That's zero because uh, when i is not equal to j, they are independent. So ex each of this is, so this is expected value multiplied by this and each is zero. Here this is sigma squared, but n times sigma squared, so uh, sigma squared cancels, you get n over sigma squared, the same as here. So the answer will turn out to be n over sigma squared. So when you flip it, you get sigma squared over n. You don't have to do both the ways, I just did it because it's the first problem. Sometimes uh, one is easier than the other. Most of the time, this is easier. Now let's say, let's say because we know what, what anybody remembers from here. What is an efficient? Uh, what is an estimate? Unbiased estimator. In the case of if the data is Gaussian, what is an unbiased estimator for the mean? Anyone? All right. So let's see what happens to sample mean. Sample mean is one over n sigma xi i equal to one through n. Now you know that this is linear combination of Gaussian. So this is Gaussian. What is the mean of this random variable? Anybody? Huh? Uh, mean is mu because uh, n mu over n, so mean is mu. And what is the variance? Anybody? Uh, all of them are independent. So it's the sum of the variance divided by n squared. So n sigma squared over n squared. Uh, so that's sigma squared over n. So look here. We have a, in this case we got lucky because we the variance agrees with the Cremer row bound. So this is an efficient estimator. And then we know that this is also the ML estimator. Uh, of course, you can uh, do that quickly, because what is ML estimator? You take the logarithm, look at here. You take the logarithm and uh, Take the, uh, the logarithm and take the derivative, which is here. So to find the ML estimator, you equate this to zero. This is equate theta equal to theta hat ML. So if you equate this to zero, from here you can see that, from here you can see n mu hat is sigma xi. Uh, so this gives you n mu hat ML is sigma xi or you hit uh, mu hat x ml is one over n sigma xi, i equal to one through n, but that's your x bar. So x bar is also the maximum likelihood estimator, as the theorem says. So this is your, uh, the sample mean is efficient, and it's also the maximum, and consequently, it's the maximum likelihood estimator.
So since we are in the Gaussian case, suppose your uh, parameter is uh, sigma squared is unknown. Okay, so I'll take the case uh, mu is known as the second example. Uh, mu is known, sigma squared is unknown. So let me write the density function in terms of sigma squared. So I'm going to, instead of sigma squared, I'm going to call it theta. So the density function is what? Somewhere here. So instead of sigma squared, I'm going to call it uh, theta. So that's going to be, or in fact, I'll just directly go to logarithm of that. So the logarithm of the density function is, it's uh, right there, right? n by 2. minus n by 2 log 2 pi theta minus xi minus mu the whole squared over 2 theta, right? Remember, sigma squared is unknown, so I'm going to call sigma to be, sigma squared to be theta. So it's the same problem, except I flipped. Uh, here I am assuming that this, in the first call case, I assumed this to be known, what we did, did because everywhere sigma squared is there. Now I am assuming the other way. Mu is known, sigma squared is unknown. So we should take the derivative with respect to the unknown. Yeah, there is a summation, right? So look here, if you do the derivative, this is going to be minus n by 2 theta, right? Log 2 pi plus log theta, 1 over theta, right? Or minus... Uh, so what is the derivative? This is just a constant. Xi minus mu, the whole squared is a constant. The derivative of uh, 1 over theta is what? Minus 1 over theta squared is So this is equal to 0. So you can see the theta hat uh, turns out to be, uh, so uh, actually you have a maximum likelihood estimator here, but we don't have, I mean, this is the first derivative. So let me, uh, I can do it this or I can take one more derivative. Or we can just uh, do it, uh, uh, let's do one more derivative. So d squared log f of x comma theta d theta squared. Otherwise you have to square it and take, uh, take care of the terms. So that's going to be, what is it, anybody? So this will become uh, theta squared, right? Yes? Minus will go away. Here minus will appear. What is it? Minus 2 sigma xi minus mu the whole squared i equal to 1 through n. Uh, minus 2, 2, 2 cancels will be theta cubed. So let's take the, now the expected value. You can write one more line if you want. Expected value of this is so fine, constant. Expected value of this is what? Anybody? Expected value of xi minus mu definition. Zero. Zero? I mean square, there is a square here. That's this is the variance, sigma squared or theta. This is theta. The expected value goes inside. So this is n, n theta. Everybody agrees? So this quantity because this expected value, if you put it here, And this is uh, theta, which is sigma squared. Theta, uh, but uh, uh, sigma I equal to one is n theta. Theta theta cancels. So this is going to be minus n theta squared, right? Theta will cancel with theta, theta squared. Theta is sigma squared, so this is sigma four. So then you get this to be, what do you get? So you get this to be the answer. So the Kramer-Rau bound in this case turns out to be will be inverse of that. So that is uh, two sigma four over n. And uh, 
Let's say I came up with this as an estimator. This is an estimator, definitely, because it is a function of data. Right? Remember, mu is known. Xi's are the data, so everything is known here. So what is the expected value of this? Anybody? Expected value on the right side. Huh? Sigma squared. So this is an unbiased estimator. So I got lucky. So this is it's a classic example. So this is an unbiased estimator for theta. And let's find its variance. So how will you find the variance? We go through the same way. So you take the, uh, you know it's mean. So you can find it's uh, square, expected value of the square and subtract the mean four, right? So let's uh, square it. So square it, this will be one over n squared. And you have to square this quantity. Yes? Remember, uh, Variance is going to be expected value of theta hat squared minus sigma 4, right? Because minus square of the variance, standard formula. So I'm going to do this. You can follow me. This is 1 over n squared from here. I'm going to square this outside. There's already a square here on each term. So then it will be double summation. A term like this and a term like this, j. So this will be summation of xi minus mu, the whole squared, some on i, summation of j xi minus mu, the whole squared, summation on j. Then you need to do the expected value here. Minus sigma 4. So again, we go through what we went through before. So I, when i equal to j, you get ex, uh, summation expected value of xi minus mu to the fourth power, right? <coughs> over n squared. Look here. You put i equal to j, i not equal to j. So i goes from 1 through n. And I not equal to j, this will be expect, uh, I not equal to j, right? Expected value of xi minus mu, the whole squared. Expected value of xj minus mu, the whole squared. Over n squared. Minus sigma 4. So let's put, uh, put each term. So this term, is, look at here. This is sigma squared, this is sigma squared, right? And there will be how many such terms? Remember, total n squared terms. n terms went away here. So the second term will be n squared minus n multiplied by sigma 4 over n squared minus sigma 4. And uh, the first term is, anybody remembers what is the fourth moment? Huh? What is expected value of uh, the fourth moment of a Gaussian random variable? Three sigma four, isn't it? I think it is three sigma four. Yes. Anybody? Yeah, it is three sigma four, right? So this quantity is, each one of them is, uh, this is 3 sigma 4. This is just a standard expression. So this is 3 n sigma 4 over n squared. Now you can put it together. See, look at here, you can cancel this in your head. Uh, because of the, the n squared, n squared will give you, uh, so the sigma 4 will go away. Here you will have sigma 4 over n. Here you have three, uh, 3 sigma 4 over n. So the answer will turn out to be 2 sigma 4 over n, if you do it correctly. But look, that agrees with the Kramer-Rau bound again. So this is also an efficient estimator. So these are bo both are classical results. 
Yeah, the bound of course can depend on the parameter, right? In this case, that's true. The bound depends on the parameter. And remember, the theorem didn't say that won't happen, right? So, but the so this is a in the if the day so let me give this uh, summarize the result. If the data is Gaussian and independent, and if the remember the Gaussian has two parameters mu and sigma squared. If you treat one is unknown at a time, so mu is unknown, sigma squared is known. The other case is mu uh, mu is known, sigma squared is unknown. Then both of them are if uh, the standard mean and the standard uh, uh, the uh, the classic uh, the uh, this exp this way uh, this is the standard uh, variance estimator. Both of them are efficient and unbiased and efficient. And uh, consequently, this is also the maximum likelihood estimator, which you can see from here. If you put this equal to zero, you get, uh, so if you put uh, this equal to zero, then you get theta hat ml will turn out to be the, that one itself. So this will also turn out to be uh, theta hat ml. And let me, if I, let me just do, Uh, one more example connected with uh, this, and uh, in this case, I'll do a Poisson uh, the uh, data where the uh, data uh, the para uh, data is Poisson random variables, and the parameter lambda in the Poisson is unknown. Problem is x i is or poison with some unknown but lambda is unknown and the data is independent. So the joint density function of all the parameters is the product of the density function of x i. And uh, remember the random variable is discrete. So this is e to the power minus lambda, lambda to the power x i. In other words, each of them will be of this form, right? E raised to minus lambda, lambda to the power xi over xi factorial. So this is E raised to minus n lambda, lambda to the power sigma xi over xi factorial. So let me take the logarithm. So interestingly is the Kramer amount you can find out even without knowing uh, an unbiased estimator. It's just a, so let me take the <laughs> logarithm is going to be minus n lambda uh, plus sigma xi uh, log lambda uh, minus logarithm of the product of xi factorial. Anyway, this is uninteresting because it's not a function of lambda. And we are going to take the derivative with respect to lambda. So I need to take the derivative with respect to lambda of this expression. That's only the first two terms. So you get minus n, and then you get sigma xi i equal to 1 through n over lambda. This is the first derivative. Uh, so you can square this, or you can do the second derivative. So if I do the second derivative of f of x comma lambda, so that will be, as you can see, it will be minus sigma xi i equal to 1 through n over lambda squared. Now what? So to complete the camera bound, we do the expected value of the second derivative. That will be the expected value of this quantity. What is the expected value of xi, if xi is our poisson? Lambda. So i equal to 1 through n. So the numerator is minus n lambda over lambda squared. So that's minus n over lambda. So this gives us the Kramer bound to be minus 1 over the second derivative. equal to lambda over n. Now, let's
let's say I have a, uh, remember, the, so this, that's, the, uh, that's the Gramey row bound. Now, if you have an unbiased estimator, we can check what is its variance. So let's again try the sample mean and see what happens in this case. So the sample mean will be x bar is 1 over n sigma xi, i equal to 1 prime. So what's the expected value of x bar? Anybody? Expected value of this, expected value of xi is our lambda, n lambda over. So this turns out to be lambda. So n lambda over lambda, n equal to lambda. So that's an unbiased estimator. So let's see what is its variance. So that's going to be the second moment minus the mean squared, right? So what's the second moment? Anyone? So again, the, we have to go through this. So this expression is 1 over n squared, uh, expected value of sigma xi, the whole squared. Right? So to complete this, uh, you, uh, so you can write this as expected value of a double summation. This is on i. So i x i sigma x t. So you do have to consider two cases again. 1 over n squared minus lambda squared. So uh, uh, when i equal to j, this becomes uh, summation expected value of x i squared. And when i is not equal to j, if this will be simply i not equal to j. They are independent, so this is expected value of xi, expected value of xj, minus lambda squared, but here divided by n squared, right? So anybody remembers the expressions? Expected value of x is for Gaussian, I mean for lambda. Expected value of x is lambda. Expected value of x squared is how much? Anyone? Lambda plus lambda squared, because the variance is lambda, right? So each of this is lambda plus lambda squared. So lambda, but there is n of them. So lambda plus lambda squared over n, because n squared. And when you come to here, each of this is lambda. So here lambda, this lambda, so that's lambda squared, but n into n minus one of them. So n n cancels. So plus n minus one lambda squared over n minus lambda squared. So what do we get? So we get uh, Huh? Yeah, so you get the first expression is lambda over n, then you get lambda square over n, then here you get uh, plus uh, lambda squared, right? Then you get uh, minus lambda squared over n minus lambda squared. So this cancels with this, this cancels with this. Lambda over n. So the answer is lambda over n. But then look somewhere here. The, that's the same as the Cremer row bone, indicating again that uh, this is an efficient estimator. All right, let me uh, con uh, where uh, previously I showed you efficient estimators. So let's again take data to be Gaussian uh, with the mu and sigma squared. And the data is, of course, independent. But for whatever reason, uh, the parameter of interest to me is uh, mu squared, not mu. Of course, if the param remember, we already did mu. If the, just to be, uh, 
if you say that your parameter of interest is mu, then we know now that uh, x bar is efficient, x bar which is the sample mean is an efficient estimator, right? Because the Cremera bound for mu was, uh, what was it, sigma squared over it, we did this, and this was also the variance of x bar. Right? We went through all this, so this is an, uh, this is an efficient estimator for the parameter mu. So we'll say, so com uh, now we are interested in mu squared. So the common sense will say if you know for mu, just square it. That doesn't uh, work as you we will see, because if you simply square this, it, may not, it won't be even an efficient estimator for whatever we are looking for. Right? So uh, let me complete this problem. We'll try to find an efficient estimator and then find its variance. And then we will also find the Cremera bound and see whether they agree or not. So Cremera bound is easy. So let me, so because we had the, this earlier, and remember theta is mu squared. That means mu is a square root of theta. So the joint density function, if you remember, it was one over two pi sigma squared n by 2 e to the power minus sigma xi minus mu. But mu is theta, right? So theta is what we are interested in. So this is the joint density function. So let me take the logarithm of this. xi minus mu, mu is square root of theta over 2 sigma squared. So let me take the derivative of this twice with respect to theta. So there is no derivative here. This one 2, 2 cancels, minus uh, goes away. So sigma xi minus uh, square root of theta. And the de derivative of this with respect to theta, so what is it? 1 over 2, 2 also, right? Yes? So this, of course, you can write it as uh, sigma xi i equal to 1 through n, 2 sigma squared square root of theta minus 1 over 2 sigma squared, right? So I'm going to do the second derivative. So this gives me of this x to the power minus half would be what? Theta to the power minus so this is minus half. Minus half, right? So that would be minus four. What? Yes? Why not? I mean, uh, remember, this is theta to the power half in the denominator. That is theta to the power minus half. So its derivative is minus half multiplied by. Remember, theta is what? Theta was. I mean, theta is mu squared. So this, of course, now I can write it as uh, minus sigma xi over 4. Right? Theta, theta is mu squared, so that is uh, mu cubed. So let me take the expected value here. So that's the expected value here. Expected value here. Expected value of xi is what? Anybody? You don't know expected value of xi? Just mu, right? So mu mu cancels. So you get this to be minus 1 over 4 sigma squared mu squared. Uh, there's also an n here, right? 
So this gives you the Gramerov bound for uh, mu squared is uh, minus 1 over expected value of uh, d squared log f uh, d theta squared. There is, there is another way to find this also. I'll come in a minute. So this is 1 over that 4 sigma squared mu squared over n. Okay, so here is again, uh, who made that comment? Here again, the parameter is in the bound. Remember, this is only an, uh, this is only part of the problem. We just found the Kramer row bound. Now the interesting, the difficult question is always give me an unbiased estimator, and then give me an unbiased estimator which is uh, agrees with this if you can find out, uh, which is an efficient estimator. So remember, uh, X bar is, uh, good for mu. So if you say, oh yeah, then I, I, why not try this? This is, the, unfortunately this is not true. That's the problem in, uh, that's the problem in the probability and statistics, right? Just because you know, uh, the, if you square the random variable, you're not going to square, the, the mean is not going to get squared. So what is the square of x bar? Uh, what is the mean of this one? But remember, we are, in this case it is easy. X bar is normal with the mean, mu invariance, sigma squared over n. So expected value of x, uh, x, square, x bar is, x bar squared is what? Uh, that's another standard theorem is going to be variance plus. Yes. The, You can, you can do it uh, chi squared what? The variance? Yeah, like, uh, yeah. If you want, right? But first of all, chi squared, this is a non zero mean. So yeah, you can just scale it and But uh, so we can, we, uh, so expected value of x is, uh, so we get, uh, this is, we know the answer to this. It's easy, right? In this case, it happens to be easy. So you see, uh, again, moral of this story, because the random variable is, Unbiased, it doesn't mean if you square it is going to be unbiased. It is not unbiased. But in this case it is easy to create an unbiased random variable because if I do this, so I'm assuming obviously at this case sigma squared is known, right? So we have an unbiased estimator for, uh, uh, for so this is an unbiased estimator for mu hat. I mean, is unbiased for, not mu hat, is unbiased for mu squared. So the last thing that remains is find the variance of this unbiased estimator. So variance of theta hat equals, uh, variance is what? Expected value of theta hat squared minus its uh, mean squared. So this is what I'm going to call theta hat minus mean squared, mean expected value of theta hat squared. That's the standard expression for the variance. So the first one we don't know, but we'll find out. Expected value of theta hat squared minus mean we found out. Look at here, the mean is mu squared, so minus mu four. So this is expected value of X, X bar squared minus sigma squared over n squared, right? So minus uh, mu four. So this is going to be, so there are three, four terms. X bar fourth mean, this fourth uh, moment of X bar minus two sigma squared n expected value of x bar squared, and the third term is sigma 4 over 
n squared plus sigma 4 over n squared minus mu 4. So this is a standard Gaussian result. If x is Gaussian with mean mu and variance sigma squared, expected value of x is mu. This is mu squared plus sigma squared. Expected value of x cubed is uh, oh, mu cubed plus uh, 3 sigma 4 and the expected value of x4 is uh, mu 4 plus six, uh, 6 mu squared sigma squared uh, plus 3 sigma mu sigma squared, it doesn't matter here, but uh, this is going to be 3 sigma 4. So we only need the fourth one, except that in our case, uh, remember, we are dealing with the x bar. So we get here expected value of x4 bar. This is what we want here. From there it will be, it's a fourth mean, uh, plus 6 mu sigma squared over n uh, plus 3 sigma 4 over n squared. So let me substitute that and see what happens. So that's going to be mu 4 uh, plus 6 mu sigma squared over n plus 3 sigma 4 over n squared minus 2 sigma 4 over n, uh, n. Look at here. Expected value of x4 bar is what? So this is uh, 2 sigma squared. Uh, then x, x bar squared. x bar squared is here, right? So that's going to be mu squared plus sigma squared over n. Uh, plus sigma 4 over n minus mu 4. So mu 4 cancels with uh, this. And uh, something else will cancel also. What ca what else cancels? Sigma 4 over n squared. What? The last term, sigma 4 This is n squared? Yeah. That cancels? Yeah, here, it cancels. So that gives you, right, right, it gives you 2 sigma 4 So this goes with this. This two I took care of it. Then what? Yeah, two sigma, two sigma four over n. So that cancels too. What? Okay, speak up loud. What? Oh yeah, this is three plus one four minus two. So it will be two. So that's good. Okay. So we took care of this also, right? Then what is remaining? You have two sigma squared mu squared over n. Right. Where, where is the mu squared coming from? This is mu squared. Uh, yeah, yeah. Let me let me double check. Right. 
You are right, that was musical. Right? So, where is it? This also, this is what you are saying, is it? So, 6 mu squared will cancel with uh, 2 mu squared, so we'll get 4. I, th I, I, I remember that's the result, I think. So 4 mu squared, sigma squared over n. So, this is the actual variance. Where is the Gramerov bound? Look at there. The Gramerov bound is only this term. So, the variance is higher than the Gramerov bound. So here is a case, look at the calculations involved, but here is a case where the estimator is not efficient. But the interesting question before I finish this in this case is, can I find uh, another estimator which has got even lower variance? Because this possibility is open. Remember, in this case, the variance of your estimator is strictly greater, not equal to the Kramer bound, right? This is not equal to the sigma squared CR. Because sigma squared CR is only 4 mu squared sigma squared over n, whereas the variance has got this extra term. So the question is, can you reduce, can you find another estimator with lower variance? This we will address uh, in a class or something, next class or something. So this is an estimator which is not efficient. So I give you examples of efficient estimators, not efficient estimators.